is the American dream still alive? My name's Grant Cardone, and I took on a challenge to build a million-dollar business in 90 days in a small town in Colorado during COVID. Your COVID test came back positive. Without using my name, without using a credit card, and without using any of my contacts. This is anxiety right here. This is suicide mission. With only $100, an old truck, and a cell phone, I got to build a million-dollar business in a town I've never been to. It's hard when you got money. It's impossible when you don't. Follow along behind the scenes of Undercover Billionaire. What they didn't show you, couldn't show you, wouldn't show you. I'm going to show you right here, right now. Huh? The refrigerator from hell. Look, close one door, another one opens. Stupid. Score. I don't have a score. I have two goals right now. Number one, I want to land clients for the promo company. I need to get the paper to pay my bills. Number two, I want to get the deal done on the apartment building. If I can't get those going, my million dollar business is bankrupt before I even get started. I keep pinging the broker and he's not giving me an update. I'm doing double duty right now. I got to get the apartment deal done and I also have to get my first client signed for the promo business. I got to find out who's out there that has my money for my apartment deal. I'm going to call Antoine Burton, a former American football player, defensive tackle, signed the Denver Broncos, like a legend here in Colorado. Through my research, I've discovered Antoine, who lives in Pueblo. Everyone knows him. He's also the executive director of the Professional Bull Rider Sports Performance Center. This is a $10 million training facility. This is the kind of whale client I need to anchor my promo company. Hey, Antoine, my name's Lewis Curtis. Uh, I'm doing some stuff with Matt Smith over at Snooze. Appreciate everything you're doing for Pueblo. Love to hook up with you, would love to meet you. Uh, hit me back, this is my cell phone. I know I'm gonna have to make about 100 meetings to get 10 clients. Life is a numbers game and it's tough. Most people are not willing to do the work I am. How many calls can I make? How many people can I get in front of? Remember, contact will become a contract, but you need a lot of contacts. Watch me set hooks. Hey, Jeff, my name's Lewis Curtis. Hey, Crystal, my name's Lewis Curtis. Hey, Margaret, my name's Lewis Curtis. I'm starting a marketing company here in Pueblo. I'd like to come by and introduce myself and just meet you. I've been doing some stuff with Ryan Zabukovic. Matt Smith said I needed to meet you. Give me a call back when you get a chance. Lewis Curtis, thanks a lot. When you're making these phone calls, you always want to build names. Names give you credibility. So look, just a little while ago, I didn't know any of these people. This promo company I'm bringing to Pueblo is going to use traditional sales method, old school, cold calling, hitting the pavement. Sorry to have missed your call. Our office is currently closed. Combined with new school social media and video to do just what I did for Matt Smith's mattress store. Me and you are going to be best friends for life. I guarantee it. Call me back. But for right now, I don't even have a business plan, a website. I got to sell me. Mm, good call, man. It's Antoine. It's Antoine, guys. Lewis. Hey, Lewis. Antoine. Burton. Man, big fan. I'll take it. I'll take it. What's your, what's your business? I, I do a really aggressive kind of traditional marketing for companies. We help a company build their database. That did this with Matt Smith over at Snap Fitness and Snooze Mattress and almost no budget, 72 hours, and I, and I just blew his place up on a weekend. I'd love to do the same for you. When can you make 10 or 15 minutes for me? Um, Let's meet Monday. How about Monday? How does Monday look, look for you? I, I got to be honest with you, uh, Lewis. I'm, I'm from New York. I don't want to waste any time. If you did things with Matt, I'm game right now if you are. I can meet you at your office in an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. This is awesome that I can meet with Antoine Burton right now. If I can sign Antoine, it'll be a huge profile score for the company. I'm excited. Hey, let me tell you what's really going on here, okay? First of all, if you go back to that opening scene, you're going to see a coffee cup behind me. That's a Starbucks cup. Now, how did that get into the place, okay? Well, I'll tell you what I did. One morning, I went to the crew, okay? They get there really early, early. I'm talking about the sun's breaking. They've already been out there an hour. As much as I rag on these guys, I mean, they work their ass off. 
And I went up to one of the guys and I'm like, hey, bro, you remember that camera you see on my, my uh, table? They're leaving that over because I shoot at night in order for them to get more content. So literally, I'm giving them eight to 10 hours of content a day plus what I collect on my own camera at night. And I went to the dude and I'm like, Hey, bro, they told me to bring this to you and get a new battery. Also, they said to order two drinks for one of the other crew members because uh, I knew these guys were getting ready to put their coffee orders in. They said to order two more of these drinks, very specific, four shots, foam to the top. It's for one of the other guys over there, and he told me to add that to the order. Well, those coffees were for me because I didn't want to spend my money, right? And they're like, Grant, spend your money. I'm like, I ain't spending my money. First of all, I'm not Grant. I am Lewis Broke Curtis. And I ain't got no money. You understand? Because remember, when I got to town, what did I do with that $100? I dropped it off at Wells Fargo. See, the fact that I dropped the 100 off means I don't have it to spend. When I got the apartment, this house that I'm living in, this, this raggedy-ass house that, by the way, was way better than the RV. How did I do that deal? I paid out of the 10000 in advance, okay? I don't see that as me spending money. I still haven't spent Discovery's money. Check that out. I used it as advance money from the 10000 that Matt gave me in order to grow the business. And I'm using this as my office, my place to, to now start building a list of names because I got to deliver now. This is the hard part of the business is you see me sitting in the kitchen now, banging out, okay? Like you have no idea for those of you who've started a business. Like I'm excited, I'm optimistic, I'm positive, but the other side of me is like, this thing's gonna work. I'm having to call people. This is the drudgery of a startup. I got to call people that I don't know. I got to sell them on somebody I don't even know. This Lewis Curtis character. And I actually got pretty good at introducing myself. This is Lewis Curtis. This is Lewis Curtis. Watching me go through these calls. Most of the time, I'm just leaving a, a name and a number that I don't even get a call back. I have no clue where it's going, okay? So this is when you as a business owner and me as Lewis Curtis fall into this abyss. The abyss of, is this going to work? Nobody's calling me, nobody's answering. All the signals now indicate this is a loser. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to troll. I know from personal experience as Grant Cardone that I need to like literally drop as many lines in the water as possible, leave as many phone numbers as possible. And while I'm doing that, notice that I'm, 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 I'm laying lines out. I'm dropping names when I can. Hey, Matt told me to call you. Zabukovic told me to call you. I'm dropping names to edify myself and create credibility where I have none. You gotta understand, I have no credibility. Lewis Curtis simply does not exist in the universe. And the reason I did this show was I wanted to prove to you that you don't need a name, you don't need money, and you don't need social media, but you do need a strategy. You need a pitch. So what am I doing? I'm making a, a lot of phone calls during the day, trying to build a contact list. 35 days I've been in Pueblo now, literally building names. The first 10 days I had 100 names, now I'm starting to add that, looking for people that I can go to PBR being one of them, Burton being one of them, where I'm gonna go pitch him. Now, if you go back and watch what I said to Antoine. I do a really aggressive kind of traditional marketing for companies. What, what kind of business you got? I got a very aggressive traditional, like I don't even know what that means. So you guys understand, in the beginning, you will be making it up. You gotta make it up to figure out what you're gonna say to people. Like, I don't know what I'm doing in the beginning and you're not gonna know what you're doing. You, you, you literally have to have a volume of calls, leaving messages, pitching your product or your service as I'm doing as Lewis Curtis to even figure out who you are, what you do, what your pitch is. When Antoine Burton says, uh, I said, man, when can we get together? I just need 10 or 15 minutes. Remember, I don't do this on the phone. I'm using the phone to get in front of this guy. I want to close the distance between me and the target. And that's why I'm doing this piece with you right now. I want you to see what discovery didn't show you, couldn't show you, wouldn't show you, maybe just simply because they don't see the moves I'm making and they didn't see value in it. So I wanted you to see that in this behind the scenes of Undercover Billionaire. So what am I doing right here, okay? In calls, notice I'm leaving big claims, okay? Hey man, I'm gonna change your life when I meet you, okay? Uh, so and so told me I had to see you because I got this big thing I'm doing. There's always some big claim in there. I'm gonna be best friends for life, I guarantee it. Then once I get somebody to call me back, okay? Watch what I do with Antoine. Hey, when can I get 10 or 15 minutes from you? I'm doing this very aggressive, traditional, whatever the hell that means, marketing, right? I, I do a really aggressive 
kind of traditional marketing for companies. We help a company build their database. I knew I was sounded stupid when I said it, right? And then what am I trying to do? I'm trying to close the distance between me and Antoine. Hey, when can we get together? When can you make 10 or 15 minutes for me? He kind of goes into a lull, doesn't give me an answer, and I'm like, hey, what's, what's this afternoon look like? He says, look, I don't want to waste any time. Are you available right now? And I pushed, I pulled the appointment forward. I created enough urgency to get in front of this guy. I just need 10 or 15 minutes, Antoine. Okay, now, let me just say this, because I'm going to move forward. You haven't seen this yet. I'm pitching a guy about traditional and aggressive marketing. I'm talking to him about what I did for Matt Smith. Hey, man, he spent no money, and I got him $80,000 back. You understand that what I'm telling Antoine Burton, I have absolutely no idea that that will help him, benefit him, support him, or even be something that he wants. And in fact, as you see, when we return to the clip, this wouldn't even fit for his market, okay? Like the, what he does in his company, not only would he not use it, but he's not even the decision maker in the company for this. So the point here is, look, when you're pitching in the beginning in the startup, you don't know what people want and need. And on this phone call, that is not the place where I'm gonna ask you what you wanna need. I need to meet people right now. I need to build my list. Regardless of the fact whether Antoine Burton wants to buy my product or service or not, I need people. Your network is your net worth, okay? Your net worth. Your ability to go into a marketplace in Pueblo and be connected, believable, and hook up with the right people means every person that you can put together that's in business, that's qualified, that's doing great things is going to get you a little closer to the thing you want to do. My goal is to build a $10 million business in 90 days. I got COVID in my face. I've been sick. Nothing's working out. My apartment deal's falling apart. Okay, I got 10 grand from the one of the most respected guys in, in, in town, but I got to deliver on the 10K, and right now, I ain't got no clue. Neither will you. Okay, let's go back to the show. All right, time to go pick it up. I'm going to meet executive director of PBR Sports Training Center and former football defensive end, the great Antoine Burton. Antoine Burton. This guy is so influential in this town. Everybody knows him. He's the kind of player I need. I got to show Antoine that I'm the guy that can get PBR the kind of promotion that can blow up his business. If I can sign him, it's going to be a big score for me. I want him as a promo client. Man, appreciate you making time for me. No, it's love, man. Okay. Get right to it, right? Yeah, I appreciate it. that. Why don't you show me around? Let's do it. This is the main gym facility. We want to be able to build performance and athletes through Western sports. Antoine's a no bull kind of guy. He's used to crunching quarterbacks. <clears throat> How many can you do? I'm pretty uh, athletic. I don't think you can do more than I can do. How many you got? I could probably go 15 to 20. Straight? But, but I'm 330 pounds. I don't know if I can now get you're in my I need world. a little box, dude. I'm a little short, dude, man. I'm coming for you, Antoine. Oh, my God. Okay, where you want me? Right here? Yeah. How many did you do? Oh, I did five. I wasn't counting. You want to I did lift my legs in, in an L shape. Forward. Can you bring your legs up? Straight legs. There it is. There it is. Yeah. I'll take it. Okay. Showing a potential client you can not only rise to the challenge, but you can win, you can go beyond what they thought possible, is the key step to standing out and winning someone's business. So, uh... Oh, my... Look at this, man. Hot, hot tub, cold tub, oh. cryo spa. Cryo? Yep. Oh, man, you got, I got to come back here and work out here. Judging by the scale of this place, Antoine has enough resources, if he can make a decision and write a check, to take my promo company to the next level. This is our lounge area here. Is it just rodeo? No. We housed 10 NFL hopefuls for eight and a half weeks. Oh, wow. What, what are these? These are drop barrels. So what, what do you do on this? Basically, you just get on and you plug it in and it just drops your weight so a rider can understand its weight. Uh -huh. Pretty simple. You ride? Absolutely not. So, Absolutely. So not. to be a rider, you so, got to be so, a certain so, weight. What, what do I do? I get up on here and I. Are you are you are you really trying to do this? So, to land and close a client, you got to be memorable. Ride the bull. Every meeting I take, I want that client to laugh with me, to cry with me, jump out of an airplane with me. I've done it all. It's got to be memorable. 
I'm not just here to talk business and close a deal. When we're done, I want that potential client to tell their colleagues about me, tell their wife or their husband about me, their damn dog. If I can do that, then I made a memory. Cowboy up, folks. Ride the bull. And let's go, man. Come on. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. It's gonna get me. Tell me when. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay. Don't. This okay, that's good. All right, I'm all right. coming off. Oh. I got. It. Oh my. There you go. No, it's a little harder than you think. Now imagine that being a 2,000 pound bull. Oh my. Now that I've shown Antoine how committed I am, it's time to get down to some business. Is there a marketing budget to blow this thing up? Not currently. Uh huh. So how can I help you get attention, make it go viral, and nah, make Pueblo go viral? Time. This could do it because it's sexy. Where'd you come from? Who, who are you? Where are you from? Come, LA. Give, you're from LA. From Louisiana, really. Louisiana, Beaumont, Los Angeles. Antoine's street smart. He's suspect of me right now. He's like, this doesn't add up. Lewis Curtis has no credibility, yet my swag, the way I talk, my confidence, it doesn't match up with a nobody. Uh, my, my goal is to come here and build a marketing company, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna buy a bunch of real estate here in town. I don't know, man. Well, I'd love to help you on the creative and the innovative. Um. I'll get you some more information. I'm very intrigued. You looking on biceps, man? I am not, my friend. <laughs> like, yeah, I I'm kidding. not. I just I'm kidding. not. I, I love your ego, by the way. I love it. It's very confident, very motivated. That's I'm very motivated, dude. Like, I, like, I, I like that, though. I like that. I want to have another meeting with you. 100%. And see if, see if me and you can do something together. I really appreciate you moving so quick on this. Making, cool beans, man. Being so hospitable. Yeah. I just got off a bull ride machine, man. My whole back's blown out. I pretty much ended my ability to father children in the future, and I still didn't get any business. This dude's tough. Now, he also didn't say no to my promo business, so I gotta pick my spots with him. Can I build a relationship with this guy so he can help me in case I can't close the deal? Okay. All right, bro. Thank you, appreciate you, all right? Talk okay. soon. Being in business with a local influencer, a businessman, would set me up. It would open doors. People will take my calls. I gotta start getting some traction, though. Right now, it's just a story. I gotta close the story to get my glory. Man, <laughs> oh my God, so many memories right now. Okay, I got a cracked shoulder right now. I got a torn uh, rotor cuff over here, and I think I got both of them from that damn bull ride. What the hell am I thinking? 60-year-old man getting on a damn bull ride trying to impress some PBR ex-athlete, Antoine Burton, who, by the way, is never going to buy anything from me, okay? Just so you guys know. I'm showing you what's going to happen before it happens. This cat is never, ever going to buy anything from me. Thank God, if you're paying attention, thank God for the mask, okay? Because if you're paying attention, the opening scene, I roll up in that old Suburban, and my hair is different than the scene with Antoine. I mean, I'm just showing you guys, like, when they cut TV and produce it, what you see ain't always what happened. So... Um, I should have shaved my head. I'm going to find out later that I had to because I'm too obvious. If you remember back in the scene with Antoine right here, he's like, hey, man, this ain't adding up, bruh. This isn't adding up. I'm keeping my glasses on. I'm keeping the mask on. Uh, uh, I'm glad the mask is muffling my voice. And I'm suspect that this guy, the way he's looking at me, he's got this YouTube twinkle in his eye. He's looking at me like sitting across from me to put me at a disadvantage, right? Because he's looking straight at me and I'm like, man, I think this cat knows who I am. He says to me, he says, uh, man, something not adding up here. I don't know if he said that exactly, but he's like, where are you from? He gives me that, that look, right? He doesn't believe me. Where'd you come in from? I'm intrigued, okay? I don't know what he's saying to me right now. When this gets over and I go to the truck, when I walk out of here and go to the truck, I, I called t a Discovery and said, hey, bro, I think this guy knows who I am. I got to stay away from him for a while. And by the way, I need to shave my head at some point. Now, you don't see this, okay, because TV likes to keep everything, you know, as a mystery because they think you guys, no offense, but they think the audience is stupid that they don't see these things. I happen to know you guys aren't stupid that you see everything. 
Let me just say a couple things here that you do and don't want to do. First of all, the ego thing I do with him. I beat him on the pull-ups. I did 23 pull-ups. I think they showed me stopping at 17. I got in the rest, okay? Number two, getting on the bull and falling off, okay? That, that's cool. It was stupid. I didn't need to do that, okay? It's a little self-aggrandizing. I would not do either one of those things if I was making a sales call to a real business person. If you're doing it to a sports person, no problem. I was with Odell Beckham the other night at the UFC game. Guy's freaking fanboying on me. If you see OBJ, tell him. Cardone said you fanboying on him at the UFC fight. True story, okay? See, high-performing athletes, the Tom Brady's, even the athletes, uh, uh, even the, the the movie stars that have done their own stunts, really high ego people, not business people, high ego sports attainers, guys that are working out, keeping themselves together, that are, that are they, they they don't care about how aggressive you are, how show off you are. A high another high ego person will not be bothered by that. However. Somebody in a management role in a company that's being paid eighty or ninety thousand a year, and you come in, you're the consultant, you're freaking showing all this swag, and you're beating people on pull-ups, riding the bull, and then sitting across the desk saying, "You looking at my biceps, man? You can't do that in the real world, folks. Do not try that shit at home, and do not try it in the boardroom, okay? Because you're going to get bounced out of there by some insecure manager." C-level VP, COO, some, some you know, president-labeled guy that's going to be like, man, I don't know, this guy's got, no, no, that's, we don't need that around here. But with Antoine Burton, he liked it, right? Why? Because he's a performer, man. He's a performer. He's a front-line guy. He don't mind being beat. He loves being around competitive, aggressive, high-ego drive people. So remember all that. Now, keep in mind, I'm walking out of that place knowing what? Lewis Curtis is walking out. Grant Cardone's sitting here with you right now talking some BS to you right now because you're watching this show. Let me tell you what I'm feeling as I'm walking out. Man, I ain't never going to get here. I'm on day 35 or 36 or something. This is insane. I just spent 25 minutes with a guy that can't get me anything, probably not going to ever spend any money on me, probably doesn't even have control of the checkbook, but let me tell you how freaking stupid I am. You know what I'm thinking about right now? This is what's going to happen to you when you're in the, real, in the workplace. I'm thinking about how can I get back there and use that damn jacuzzi tonight? See, see, you see, in the real world, this is what they don't tell you. Your coach doesn't tell you and the consultant doesn't tell you, you know, and, and they don't tell you on Instagram. In the real world, you're trying to build something every day. And when you don't get what you want in the real world, you're trying to figure out how to nurture yourself every day. Like, how do I get that warm, snuggly, comfortable feeling? Like, when's mama going to hold me? Man, I'm away from my wife, my two kids. I'm living in this this, this dump house, better than the RV, but still, come on, from where Grant Cardone came from, like, you know, the air conditioning, the heater, the refrigerator door don't even close. Uh, I'm eating beans and rice every single day. No problem, but, but uh, I mean, after a while, come on, okay? I got this condo life in Miami dr pulling on me, okay? All I remember after being with Antoine, as I'm walking out, I'm giving you my private thoughts. I'm like, that guy ain't never going to do business with me. Man, how can I get back to that damn jacuzzi? That's going to be really important later on because I'm thinking about how can I get back in that gym? How can I get back on that equipment? How can I use those bikes? How can I get back in that jacuzzi? I wonder how hot that thing is. Is it going to feel good when I get back in there? Can I get back in there? And check it out. Can I get a key to the place? Let's see. <laughs>
Uh, we actually moved here about seven months ago. Uh -huh. Well, I'm coming here, man. I'm starting a business here. In Pueblo? Yeah. Nice. I'm working with Matt Smith. You know Matt over at Snap Fitness and Sears? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually right. bought my mattress from him. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. Yeah. That's cool, man. We may, I mean, why, why Pueblo? Why? Well, because I, I'm in L.A., and I'm trying to move my family down here just because so many problems over in L.A. Okay. I'm trying to come down here and start a marketing company, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at real estate here. This is definitely a place to start buying land and building homes. You think you're just going to flip flip homes, or you think you're going to start, like, whole No, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to buy an apartment building here. Oh, yeah. There's a... You, you know you know the property, uh, Kona Kaya? Yeah. It's pretty cool. So I'm looking for partners, mm -hmm. and I'm a new. I'm in a new place. I don't know anybody. Nobody knows me. Mm -hmm. So anything you can do to help me. My best friend's brother, him and his partner, flip homes. So maybe they want to partner with me on this apartment deal. I'll throw you his number. Okay. I knew I was coming to the right place, man. I just knew it. <laughs> right on. Get off the phone, get off the computer, and make contact. Because interactions lead to transactions, contacts lead to contracts. An interaction with just one person could be the link to a multi-million dollar transaction. All right, let's see what you think, man. Damn, man, I'm looking tight. Dude, you got me looking good, bro. That's the best haircut I ever got in my life. How much owe you? We'll just do 30 even, brother. No, put 50 on there, man. Thank you. Yeah. 5138 with the put 5138 on it. I want to show you this apartment deal too. Maybe you want to maybe you want to throw in with me. Yeah, I'd like to be there on that. Ten and a half million dollar deal. I, I'm probably going to get under contract for nine million. I think it makes 15 percent in year one. I've got money like no, that. No, you don't need that much. You could throw 45 grand in the deal. Okay. You know, it's just time to grow up, man. It's time to grow up, bow up. You know, come on, man. Look, I don't need to drop $50 on a haircut, but I do need to make contacts. If I'm going to make this apartment deal happen, I'm going to need some moolah. I'm going to need stacks and racks. If Derek actually can get me leads and investors, if that pans out, this $50 haircut that I didn't need could be worth millions. Look, if this deal for the apartment building actually goes through, then my next problem will be money. I'll need investors fast. I'm working every angle. I can't just depend on Matt Smith. But right now, I can't even get a broker to call me back. Why? Because I'm nobody. And that's why this guy's not calling me back. And I'm worried I'm going to lose this deal. I don't know what I'm doing next. I commit first, and I figure out the rest later. It'll come. Creativity follows commitment. If you're finding yourself struggling with commitment, struggling with coming up with ideas. You can't come up with a solution for that client or the promotion. You're having trouble coming up with the answers. Don't get a bigger group of people and have a meeting around a table. Commit. Once you commit, creativity will follow. Look, I've texted him, I've called him, I've left messages, I've emailed him, and he's not calling me back. I didn't know that we have a deal before I could close, before I start spending money on inspections, due diligence, appraisals, loans. It's so frustrating being Lewis Curtis, okay? If I was Grant Cardone, I'd have this deal. Uh, I've got to figure that out. I'm not going to work out it. Come on, giddy up, y'all. The clock is ticking. Let me call my boy Paul. He's the broker in the apartment deal. I gotta get this guy on the phone. Keep that, keep that hot. I've gone on two meetings for the promo company, nothing, zero clients. I've yet to hear back from the owners of the apartment complex, and I'm trying, I'm trying to buy this property, and I can't even get them to entertain my letter of intent. I need investors to get me racks of dough, then I need to get a loan. I gotta get busy here, and I can't even get Paul the broker to give me the intel I need to secure the building. Hey, Paul, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? 
you know, just, uh, you know, just hanging on, trying to make things happen, my friend. Um, were you able to present the LOI to him? We did. We did. I presented the LOI. Um, he hasn't gotten back to me. I emailed it to him. I know you're in a hurry. And I, yeah, no, I know. I don't want to it, rush him. I just wanted to, I, I'm getting ready to call it a day, yeah. and I just wanted to get some feedback. You're, you're good. I, you know, I won't hear anything today. I bet I'm okay. going to try to connect with him in the morning. Okay. I'm going to try to get a counter to you, but um, yeah. you be patient. Yeah, no problem. Use your brain, not your heart and your emotion. Never get emotional in a business deal. When it comes to negotiations, decisions, agreements, understand that it's unrelated to you in many cases. Do not react emotionally. You got to be like Dr. Spock on Star Trek. Never get emotional. Stay analytical. Their emotions are not related to you. Do not react emotionally. Stay calm, stay cool, stay analytical, and stay for the close. Okay, well, look, talk, I just wanted to reach base today and just tell you that, you know, I'm serious and, and uh... Yeah, yeah, I was hoping to get to meet that. We just got to meet that. Yeah, no problem, man, no problem. I know sometimes they get emotional about this, so... Look, I've done $3 billion worth of real estate transactions. This is how it goes down. I find a piece of property that's for sale. I make an offer called a letter of intent that will include the price that I'm willing to pay, the security deposit I'm going to put down, and the time at which I will close. The buyer will then respond to my letter of intent, hopefully, at which point they will counter my price, they will counter my security deposit, and they will counter when we close. Then there's the, the point at which we get control of the property because they agree to a letter of intent, at which point I will get a inspection on the property. But look, none of this matters if I can't get the damn seller to even respond to my LOI. Uh, let me know when you know something. I'll be around all day tomorrow. Okay, yeah, I'll be calling you. Thanks. Look, I'm hoping they agree to my offer. I know I can do this deal, even though I have no money, no credit, and nobody knows who I am. The promo company's got unbelievable upside, but this is a whale. Okay, so, I, you know, again, what's hard to put in TV is what I'm going through while I'm doing this and what you're going to be going through. When you're trying to get a deal done, okay, remember, I got one business over here, this marketing business. I took 10 grand from Matt, and I'm trying to get that business going. And I got this other deal over here, a $10 million deal that I'm trying to get under contract that I truly believe if I can buy this deal, I'm going to pick up, you know, probably 2 or $3 million worth of equity, of increased value because of what I could do with this property. Now, discovery, what you're not seeing, again, what, what you don't see, can't see, what they didn't show you for whatever reason, discovery is fighting with me every day not to show the apartment deal. They do not want the apartment deal in there. Angus, <laughs> I'm having a fight with everybody. I'm like, guys, the apartment deal, they're like, hey, it's a real estate transaction. I said, no, a real estate transaction. You told me to go to Pueblo or whatever city you were going to drop me off in, and my, guy, my job was to build a million-dollar business in 90 days. If I can buy a $10 million property, create $3 million worth of new value, I buy the property. However the hell I figure out how to do that. It's basically going to be a limited liability corporation called an LLC. That property has a hundred and some odd units on it, and it's going to create income. And I can increase the rents on the income, no different than me increasing the rents over at Matt's gym business, okay, or, or, or market for a car dealer and get new revenue. It's all the same. And I'm literally having a fight Every single day, not just with trying to get Antoine to call me, trying to get Matt Smith to call me back, trying to get some marketing going, trying to add some clients, trying to get a haircut, trying to disguise myself as Lewis Curtis, and trying to buy a real estate deal. I got to fight with Discovery and the executives in Los Angeles that don't think that this real estate is an actual, uh, a real transaction. And they're also saying, hey, Grant, man, how's the viewer going to actually believe that you, Lewis Curtis, with no money could actually raise the money for a $10 million deal? I'm like, yeah, that's kind of the point of the show, stupid. Okay, it's called undercover billionaire. Guy goes into a town with no money, an old truck, an old phone, a hundred bucks. Can't use his name, can't call his contacts, and he's going to build a million dollar business. Who believes that shit? So the fact that I can do this, just just sit back, watch it. Look for the things that I'm doing and put the pieces together. Okay, a couple things. I'm talking about pressing flesh in this episode. Hey, you got to press flesh. You got to meet people. You got to get in front of people. If you don't have a client to get in front of, find somebody in the community that is connected to other clients in the community. You will notice that I never spend any time with anyone. 
I've mentioned this a couple of times, this not in play. In play means I'm at business, I'm doing a business, I'm collecting something. Also notice me getting a haircut, okay? I mean, look, I should have had him shave my head right there. That was stupid. For 50 bucks, just hit the whole thing, okay? Because I really needed to be disguised. I'm not sure, and I tell Discovery this later on, I said, bro, I think the guy Derek knows me. I'm telling you, he had this look in his eye. Maybe, maybe I'm just getting paranoid right now, but I'm that close to the guy. He hears my voice. He's that age bracket that would be watching YouTube. It's kind of hard for me to believe that he don't know who I am. Why did I pay him $20 extra on the haircut? 5138 would do. But 5138 on the $30 is a lot of haircut in Pueblo. That's a big haircut. I think he took advantage of me. And then I popped 20 on top of that. Why? I've spent no money. I'm giving no one anything. Notice I didn't tip anybody at the restaurant. Why did I tip this guy so hard? Because I'm going to set this guy up to get me a meeting in order to try to crowdfund the apartment deal. I figure I'm going to need a million dollars, maybe a million and a half to buy this apartment deal if I can get it under LOI. Understand, what I'm pitching to him right now and to the world is I'm going to get this deal. I'm going to go home and realize I can't even get Paul the broker to call me back. You have to live in these two worlds. One of, hey, make believe, almost like you have to be able to see the future. You're not lying to anyone. You're trying to, you're trying to forecast the future. And this other world that you live in, the reality world, the struggle world, where you're like, I'm getting beat up. I can't even get the guy to call me back. It's very difficult to transition between these two places, okay? You just got to keep believing in the dream and that things are going to unfold. So the last part of this scene is you sell me, you see me on the phone with the broker trying to be cool. I'm not cool at all. I'm freaking losing my mind right now. They won't call me back. I can feel the deal fatiguing. It's called deal fatigue. A deal goes on too long, you're losing it. They're not calling me back. There's no excitement. There's no response. Something's happening. I'm getting severely paranoid, okay? And so uh, I'm trying to sell the broker on keeping this deal alive. I'm trying to act calm and cool because as I said earlier in the clip, hey man, you cannot get emotional. You gotta stay calm, stay cool, stay steady, okay? Now, can you do this in the real world? What I have going for me that most people do not have going for me when you go out into the real world is I have tremendous amounts of compression on me, okay? Meaning a timeline. I gotta end, I got what, 37 days? I got what, uh, 53 days left to pull this off? That's what most people don't have that you need in your life. You need compression, a target and a date. I'm working two angles right now, maybe three angles. I'm working the real estate deal. I'm working the marketing thing. I don't even know where either one of these are going to go or how they're going to go. Okay, you got to maintain this idea that it's going to come around somehow. Somehow it's going to come around. I'm spending all my time with the right people, but look, it ain't easy. It's not going to be easy for you. It's not easy for me, and it's definitely not easy for Lewis Curtis. Hey, buddy. Come see, buddy. Look, buddy. Hey, look. Little man. Look at these nuts. Little squirrel. Come here, buddy. Look. Watch, he's going to come. I haven't landed any clients for my promo business. I keep calling about the damn apartment complex. They still haven't made a decision about my offer. Nothing is working. If he comes down and eats these nuts, I'm gonna get this deal. I bet you he eats them. I got a response from Paul, a counter. Call me with any questions so we can put this to bed quickly. It's amazing. I'm gonna buy that apartment deal. So what happens is I offered 8750. They hit me back at 9.4 million. I think they're playing the split game. I don't play the split game. Listen, I ditched the split. Their first number for the apartment deal was 10 milli. I offered him 875. He said nine would do it, so I cut him back a little bit because I know we're gonna go back and forth. They're coming back with a number in the middle. That's what they always do, but you don't wanna do that. Gain the upper hand by raising your price minimally and you're always gonna be the stronger negotiator at the table. Hey, hey, Paul, here's where I'm at, all right? So I'm gonna get you a counter at nine million even, no more <laughs> effing around, okay? Um, now, do I need to send you this back in writing or are you good, you good to just go back over the phone and say, hey, this is where he's at? Definitely in writing. Okay, um, I'll send it back to you right now. It's gonna yeah. say nine million dollars. <laughs> okay. okay, now, now let's talk about the deposit. It sounds like they're good with the 200. Okay, yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll put all that together and I'll send it to you right now. Okay. Thank you. I've sold Paul because I know the language. You can shave the face, shave the head, cover, mask it. You can't hide what I know. Clearly, they know I know something, that I'm a professional. While Paul finalizes the terms from the seller, I need to commit investors so I can actually deliver a stack of 200,000 for the deposit. And I gotta do that the moment the offer is accepted. Hello. Derek. Yes, sir. Lewis Curtis. <laughs> you love my haircut, man. Right on, I appreciate it. Derek the Barber said he might have some potential investors for me. And last night he sent me a list of nine, almost 10, investors for the apartment deal. You got one minute? Yes, sir. You sent me nine nine people that might be interested. Tell me about that. These are just guys that own companies that I've known for a few years. They previously said things about wanting to get into trade and invest. Yeah, maybe we could, you know, get them all together and have a beer with them or something. When do you want me to set that up? Man, as soon as possible. Yeah, that's fine. All right, bye. I can't wait to tell Matt today. What's up, Louis? I got a formal counter, 9.4 million. That's a negotiable. I, I think I get it down to 9 million. And this guy gave me a whole list of investors I need to call. I'm excited. I built a multi-billion dollar real estate empire off of real estate deals alone. And this deal is about to happen. I can feel it in my bones. This deal is so close. And when it does happen, I'm gonna prove to everyone around the world with no money, no contacts, just a smart strategy and focus and some swag that even Lewis Curtis can come to Pueblo and build a multi-million dollar business. I'm gonna do this deal, guys. I'm gonna do this deal. Okay, hey, man, the squirrel looking for the nut was perfect for this segment, okay? Discover you guys got that one right. Good job on the cameraman. Okay, couple things right here. Oh my God, I was so excited right here when the guy called me back and said, bro, we're gonna do the deal. I'm tripping out. Discovery, the people on the ground are calling back to LA saying, this guy's about to buy a $10 million piece of real estate, 40 days into Pueblo, no money, hadn't spent his 100 bucks, Okay, he's, got, he's lived in an RV. He's had a Jeep, brand new $40,000 Jeep to drive. Now he's got an apartment with a computer, with Wi-Fi, watching TV at night, sitting in the back of his yard, watching the, the little the river, whatever it is, overlooking Pueblo. And he's going to do a $10 million deal. He's having a, they're literally calling the president of Discovery saying, this guy is about to buy a t 9 or $10 million piece of real estate, okay, with no money. And he's only been here 45 days. Okay. They're tripping out. They can't believe it. So now what happens is they swing and they realize, oh my God, this is going to be great TV if he pulls it off. Okay. So I'm freaking super excited. The squirrel shows up and actually eats the nuts. That was definitely an indicator. I got this deal. When Paul called back on the, uh, the Paul, the broker called back and said, look, they want nine, four fifty. I knew I couldn't take that number. You don't know what's going to happen yet, but I kind of regret that as I sit here. And, and chum this, break this down with you right now. But but I never split the split, okay? I never split the difference, I'm sorry. What I wanna do is I wanna wait for the split. Weak negotiators typically will split, okay? I think I was at eight, seven, 50. Uh, they were at 10 million. So what they do is they'll take the 1.2 million and they'll say, let's split it. You do 600, I'll do 600, whatever the number is in this. Yeah, that's about it on this. And that's how they came up with their 9450 number. So what I do is I wait for the split, okay? Let's say, let's say the, the offer's uh, $9 million and $10 million, just to be simple. I'll wait for them to say, I'm, not, I'm, I'm at ten, 9 million, you guys are at 10 million. I'll wait for them to say, let's split the difference. And what I'm hoping to do right there is split the split, okay? If I split the split, it'll always pick me up about 25% of the objection money. So if they say, hey, let's split the difference, then I'm waiting to say, yeah, I got it. That seems fair, but this is where I can operate, okay? I could split the split, meaning we'll go between $9 million and nine two fifty. In this case, I went straight back to $9 million. They end up accepting the offer. I go back and say, look, I'll do $9 million. Now, I'm on the phone with this cat in the backyard. I'm Grant Cardone on the inside, but I'm Lewis Curtis on the phone. And I know when this call is over with, Lewis Curtis has to go pick up the money, not Grant Cardone. You guys understand the difficulty here, right? You understand, like, I'm having Grant Cardone believes he can raise the money. And this is why 
you know, for you guys that are watching this saying, bro, like, how did you know you could pull this off? Okay. Because the one thing discovery can't take away from me, they could take the money, they could take away my hair, they could take away my name, they can take away my social platform. They can't take away what I know. And more importantly, they can't take away what I believe. Also, they can't take away the fact that I've had experience doing this. So this is so why it's so important for you at home to become successful because once you become successful once, once you win a race one time, once you knock a guy down one time, once you win one time, now you know what? I can win. And then if you win twice or three times or four times or five times or six times, the more times you win, the more times you know you can win. So no matter how much or how big the setback is, you know you can go out and win. That's why so many people go bankrupt. If you ever see a, a super wealthy guy go bankrupt, boom, he gets it back faster the second time. Why? Because he's already done it once, okay? So I'm sitting in the backyard with Paul saying, okay, $9 million, I'll do the deal. Uh, I'll put 200 grand down, okay? That's my deposit. You guys understand that I have no clue where the 200 grand is coming from. I can't worry about that right now. I got to convince Paul to do this deal with me to get the LOI signed I'll worry about the money later. Take things as they go. Let's move to day 44. Man, we in flight. We in flight. What can I say? I'm on my way to a meeting with potential investors for my apartment deal. Derek, my barber set this up. Do barbers know everybody? Denver Broncos, Antoine Burton's gonna show up there as well, joining a young group of Pueblo business owners and hopefully investors in my new apartment complex. They are who I was when I was 25. And if I could get them in that deal and they could own a piece of real estate, not only will I build a million dollar business, but I know in my heart of heart, I changed your life forever. I built a multi-billion dollar real estate empire and I'm used to pitching rooms with as many as 34,000 people in it. This crowd is gonna be a tiny, tiny fraction of what I'm used to, and I can't use my name. I don't have a fancy stage. I have no PowerPoint. I don't even have a computer. I'll just have to use a, a giant easel that I snagged from Snap Fitness. It's time to meet some young Pueblo players and hopefully raise some money. Lewis Curtis, you can do this. We got a full house. Look at this place. <laughs> All I need to do in this meeting is shake 200K out of the tree in the barber shop to secure the property. That's called a security deposit. And that's going to be like for a second. Then I got to start hustling the $2 million that it takes as a down payment to purchase this property. How you guys doing? Good, Good man. Mr. Burton, how you doing? Hello, my friend. Good to see you, man. Now it's time to do what I do best is Grant Cardone, a.k.a. Lewis Curtis. If I can get each person in the room to do 20000 that apartment building is ours. And Matt Smith and all these dudes that are investing with me will be making money for decades. Okay. Hey, guys, thank you so much. My name's Lewis Curtis. I'm from L.A., and uh, I'm working with Matt Smith. I invest in real estate, and I need investors. Uh, I found a deal here at Kona Kaya. How many of you know Kona Kaya? Everybody in this town knows Kona Kaya, okay? The Kona Kaya is 151 units. This is one of 24 buildings in this town that have 100 units or more. Bigger to better. I say go big or go home. Uh -huh. Or go bigger, <laughs> okay? It's one of my classic crowd lines. Go big or, and everybody's like, go home. I'm like, no, go bigger. And I'm like, oh, damn, that's Grant Cardone. Number one, the market timing is perfect right now. Pueblo's on fire. It's gonna continue to heat up here. You guys hear it at every barbecue that you go to. No housing here, there's no housing here. So we never have to worry about vacancies in this building. Uh, number two, it's how we get rich on this deal. Leverage, I have an offer for nine million. The Kona Kai deal is $10 million. I'm gonna buy that deal with two million bucks. When I can take $2 million and get a loan for the remainder, and then we're gonna use the leverage, this $8 million worth of debt. How many of you talk debt is bad? All debt is bad debt. Not if somebody else pays the interest. We will use the rent from 151 units to pay down the mortgage and the interest. That's how you get rich. It's called leverage. Okay, cash flow. Cash flow in this $2 million should produce $140,000 to $200,000 per year to the investors. If the rents don't go up for the next 30 years, they haven't done that since World War II. We would make 200 grand a year for 30 years. That'd be $6 million. What do we pay for the deal? Two million. Two million. 
I tripled my money and we own the asset and it's worth 10. When we do renovations and increase the property's value, it'll be several times that. Okay, last thing is the depreciation. Okay, depreciation is the greatest wealth builder there is on this planet. Let's say the six of us get together and buy this deal, put up to two million. Our depreciation for that two million against our other income from other businesses is not two million, it's 10 million. This is the only vehicle available in the United States today where you can write a check for $2 million and get to write off $10 million. That's how you work a room, ladies and gentlemen. Every potential investor here should feel like they're gonna miss out if they don't write me a check. Now it's time to collect. Give me the money, and I need to get it in my hands. Don't show me the money, give it to me. Is the investment or the investor passive? Yes. Is, is there a cap on investors? There's no cap on investors. It'd be better to go in like the le less amount of people with most amount, you know what I mean? Okay. How much you want to do? No, I'm, I'm, working. I'm trying to figure out where you're feeling, you know what I mean? I'd rather have more partners because I get more support. I got more people saying, Kona, Kona, Kona. What are you in for? Money was. I'm in, I'm in to make the deal work. Any other questions? I'm curious about like the layout of this investment. Like for you, so you would be considered the owner, the sole owner, and we're no, investors no. for it? We, 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 we would set up a structure that everybody's satisfied with. Look, here's the opportunity. I'm a fast talking guy, okay? I'm not slow and go, pub Pueblo. Sorry. I'm telling you, I'm from LA, I go fast. If you like real estate, you like passive income, you like depreciation, you like tax write-offs, then you just gotta decide if you you trust your partners. These guys got a lot of questions, many of which mean nothing. As Grant Cardone, I do my flashy pitch, but also I have a staff of the smartest damn people in the world to know all the details and execute on these deals. Now I'm a complete nobody stranger, Lewis Curtis. Okay, who's interested? Who, who's interested enough to put some money in this deal? I'm interested enough to get more information. Okay, okay. Well, this is definitely uh, a big project that he's trying to, you know, pull off here. I don't know necessarily if that's something that, for my first go around in real estate, that's the uh, magnitude at which I want to involve myself. The card I gave you is just to say, hey, you interested? Not interested, not ready, need more information, whatever. Just fill it out for me, okay? Let me know who you are. I'm here to make friends anyway. I'm not going away. Dude, there's not a single person ready to throw down money in this deal. That hasn't happened to me in years. I really wanted to prove to Matt that I could raise some investor dollars. I can't even get one person to throw a dollar in. Hey, thanks again, guys. I blew that deal. Now I'll get the LOI accepted, and now I'm not gonna have the 200K. So this is crazy, man. I cannot believe I got myself in this situation. Okay, sir, let me just go home by myself. So get out, get out, get out. Man, I need some money coming in, dude. Oh my God, man. I got, I got, I got a PTSD from watching that shit. <laughs> I blew that so bad. If you caught the scene on the way over there, me eating sunflower seeds, I stole those, by the way, from the truck. These guys, these guys on the crew, they, they got uh, crackers and sunflower seeds and Diet Cokes. I'm always in there stealing shit from them. They don't know it, but I did. Discovery Channel, I stole a bunch of stuff from you. Okay. Oh, my God, man. This was terrible. Okay, what well, you guys don't see, the last scene, I'm kicking the cameraman. The cameraman's jumping in my car. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? I'm trying to raise money here, bro. I can't have you guys jumping in my car. This guy ends up ruining my whole deal, by the way, as you'll see later on. My whole deal on the real estate, because it's a small little town. The talk goes around and say, why has this guy got cameras around him all the time? So the barber shop was a big flunk. This is what happened. Okay, if you go back and watch it, you're gonna see Lewis Curtis, forgot he was Lewis Curtis and became Grant Cardone. All of a sudden, I'm a teacher, man. I turn into this educator. I got my little, I got my little board out, you know, full on Grant Cardone talking about depreciation. These guys are looking at me like, depreciation? What you talking about, man, okay? I'm talking about they can write off their income. Most of the room didn't have any income. They're like, what you talking about income, man? Like I was so far over their heads and then I went too fast. 
So when I walked into the room, I'm looking around the room going in optimistic saying, yeah, man, man, let's go, man. I'm going to raise this money. I'm getting all cocky. Be careful that you stay connected to the audience in present time and you stay, you know, you got, you got to know your audience. I'm coming in like gunning. I'm coming in thinking I got it. I looked around the room. I was like, always do the math. 10 people, each give me 20K, I got 200 grand. Always do the math at your meetings. How many people do I need to participate? So I went in super op optimistic. I fell into Grant Cardone. I went too fast on my pitch. Again, know your audience. I should have dumbed the whole thing down. Not because they're dumb, but because I need to slow down the pitch. You guys know that Kona Kai property up there? I got it under contract. Okay, I slipped into this deal. And I'm looking for some people to invest with me, right? I need to slow everything down. I shouldn't have bought, brought the flip chart in. And if I did, I should have just kept it simple. Here's how we make the money off the deal, all right? I caught myself going too fast. In fact, I busted myself. And I said, look, I'm a fast-talking dude from L.A. Because I realized the audience was not responding the way I wanted them to. So I called myself out and hoping, and, and, and hoping to, to, to find out where they were at or what they were thinking. Unfortunately, nobody in the room told me anything, so I walked out of there confused. Thank God I brought those little cards so I could collect their names, and not one person was ready to put money down. So I went in there all pumped. You ever been in that meeting before? You walk in, you're all excited, you're going to get the business, and you walk out and like, Shh, that's terrible. Well, that's what happened to me. And when I get in the car, I got a goddamn cameraman getting in with me, jumping, worry about some GoPros or something. And that blows the whole deal because Antoine in the room is already suspect. And I could see a couple of these guys talking about, who is this cat, man? What's this dude up to? Who is he? You know, the new guy's never trusted, right? So here I walk into this barbershop meeting thinking I'm going to, I'm going to do great things and collect a bunch of money. I walk out empty handed only to find a cameraman in the truck blowing my cover. Let's, let's see what happens from here. 45 days, I'm halfway through this challenge, and what do I have to show for it? Nothing. What the f have I got myself into? No promo clients, I got no real estate. <laughs> I'm down, but I ain't out, okay? I trust myself. I guarantee you, I'm gonna figure a way out, and I'm gonna figure a way up. If I don't walk away with $10 million business, even though I'm down and out right now, I'll be shocked.